up? It is Monday Motivation. Welcome in, everybody. I decided to do the teaser of the 2000 sub giveaway because, hey, that's coming up Saturday. I was like, oh, man, I should have went in there and changed it real quick. But coming July 22nd, y'all know me. I love the whole dramatic effects. But anyways, I just thought, well, I'll play that while people kind of gather in and so forth. So welcome in. I am so glad to see each and every one of you for tonight's uh, subject because it is one that I have had planned for quite some time. And I am super excited to discuss it tonight because I'm curious about what everybody else thinks and so forth. So uh, if you do not know who I am, my name is Pamela, a.k.a. Scooter Renee. I'm your host of Monday Motivation, as I am every Monday Motivation. And so make sure you do all the youtube -y things like you subscribe to me, you ring the bell for all notifications so you will not miss anything that I upload content wise or when i go live as well and the thumbs up guys if you would not mind please hit the thumbs up on your way in on the way out whenever you're watching this no matter what hit the thumbs up i would greatly appreciate that so uh let's see welcome to all the ogs you know who you are. You're with me all the time. I appreciate seeing you here, as well as my playback crew. I cannot forget you guys, as I say every each and every week. I cannot forget you guys because if it wasn't for you, this would not be happening. And so I am so appreciative of the playback crew, which just goes to show if you can't catch me live, you can certainly catch the playback. Or if you just need a refresher, you need a day to motivate your, yourself during the week or whenever. You can watch any of them. I have them all in the playlist. And Monday Motivation, there is, as of tonight, guys, as of tonight, there are, will be 49 episodes. 49 episodes that you can go back and watch. The beginnings are rough, I will admit. But, hey, it gets better from there. <laughs> so, let's see who all we have here. We have Selena in here first and foremost. Welcome in, Selena. Guys, if it gets hard to see me or the glare of my glasses is bugging you, let me know. I'm trying to keep my ring light off because it gets so stupid hot in this room of my house. So I'm trying to get by without it for tonight. We got Tammy in the house. Hey, Tammy. Welcome in. And, of course, Jimmy Mac. When are you coming back is here. Got my hug today, so I'm super ecstatic about that. Lisa D, welcome in. Good to see you, Lisa. So good to see you. Let's see. Thank you, Lisa D. I just want to kind of remind everybody, hey, 2007 giveaways coming up this Saturday. Road Flow will be here. I will probably have some guests on with me as well just kind of you know i'm sure y'all get tired of hearing me all the time so anyways hey shelby we got shelby here welcome in thank you for being here let's see we got nancy smith in the house welcome in nancy that's right did you get any sleep yet selena i forgot you were on late last night i woke up like around midnight one o'clock i was like uh <laughs> oh, but by the way, it was 11 o'clock my time, so. Go cool, Ranch, there's my sister. Welcome in. Good to see you, my friend. Right, and... Did I say hello to Nancy Smith? Everything starts running together. Hey, Nancy Smith, if I did not say hello. Hey, Becky, welcome in. Good to see you. So glad that you are here. And I have finally caught up. Wait, you're up till seven this morning? Oh my goodness, I could have called you at any point then. <laughs> I could have called you anytime I woke up. Probably wouldn't understand a word coming out of my mouth, but hey. So I hope everybody is having a good night so far. Lisa D fell asleep three ish. Oh, man. I miss my late nights thing yet, but I just can't do any more. So, welcome, everybody. Glad, again, to have you, as I will state for the third time. Uh, 2000 Sub Giveaway is going to be this Saturday night at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Um, you must be a subscriber and you must be present to win. Uh, how we're going to do the games and everything. It'll just make it easier, a lot more fun too if people are present. Um, so tell your buddies to get to subbing if they would like to be a part of that giveaway and everything. Share this out if you think anybody needs Monday motivation or just regular, you know, motivation. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, for huge giveaways. Um, again, I'm so excited for all that to finally be happening. I have uh, been doing the hashtag short videos still this week. This is the time for you to get two extra entries into the big giveaway, which is the $200 scooter cash that I'll be giving away uh, as the grand prize. So um, if you get the right answers, you get two extra entries. And I'm not letting you know if you got the right answer or not. You'll find out when I heart and thumbs up your answer uh, when I do that later this week. Uh, let's see. What else is there? Um, if you're wondering what the hashtag is, I do a hashtag giveaway every month. So all you gotta do is watch the short videos and in these short videos towards the end, usually I give you the hashtag word of the day. You just got to comment with that hashtag word. Easy peasy. Nothing to it except for the question and answers. You got to know me in order to get those this week. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and if you just now figured out what the uh, hashtag shorts are, or you can still get in from July 1st to present, and you have until midnight, July 31st. Or 31 days. To the end of the month, you have until midnight, that last day of the month. And then we will draw for our July winner come 1st of August. So one entry per day. All right, guys. So tonight's topic again is on is the glass half full or is it half empty um it is the age o common expression everyone knows when we say is the glass half full or is it half empty everybody knows what that means right hey francine welcome in good to see you there you are welcome in Jeffrey, hello, buddy. I just commented on your live video. I don't know if you saw that yet or not. Thank you, Cool Rich. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay. So everybody knows what that um, means. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? How do you see the glass? How do you see it? Um, so just in case anyone in here does not know what that means, or if you're the playback crew, because you didn't know what it meant. Um, when we say that, a half full glass for someone that says they see the glass as half full is an optimistic type of person. These people are exhaustively optimistic and always positive, always happy. These people's glasses are not only half full, but sometimes they are running over. Um, they focus on what is there they are the the living the dream kind of people they are the believers of the rainbows and the unicorns uh, we are the ones notice i said we <laughs> are the ones with hope and we are appreciative of everything we have that comes our way and we focus on the good and the positive side of things so if someone says the glass is half empty Obviously, they are going to be the opposite. They are equally as exhausting, yet they are overly pessimistic uh, type of person. Always sad, always seeing negative. They're the Debbie Downers, the Eeyores, as I like to call them. They focus on what is not there. And instead of living the dream, they are dream crashers. They fret over what can go wrong. They're stressing all the, all the way. So that's the difference. If you did not know, I'm pretty sure y'all knew. Hey, Rev Art, it's good to see you. Always love it when you come in and say, Little Red. <laughs> you are the one that started that name for me. Where'd you go? Thank you, oh, Art. Welcome in, buddy. Hey, Tammy. Welcome in. Good to see you as well. 
catch up on chat here real quick. All right. So I want everyone to put in chat if they are a half glass full. And you can just put full if you're full. Or if you're a half glass kind of empty person, you can put empty. We will uncover the answer later of what I think this means. And we will also, um, I will give mine as well as what I am. While you are all putting your answers into chat, let's jump on over to positive spot thought for tonight. Positive spot thought, a man can succeed at almost anything for which he has unlimited enthusiasm. It doesn't matter if the glass is half full, half empty. All that matters is that you are the one pouring the water. As long as you are the one pouring the water. So we're going to see who all has admitted to which one they are. So we got Becky is full, Lisa D is full, Cool Ranch is full. <laughs> Only you, Tammy. It depends on the size of glass I have. No matter what glass you have, Tammy, are you are you do you see it as half empty or half full? Sam was talking with was that question. <laughs> do you see the glass as half empty or half full, Selena? Francine says full. Lisa says, I hope I'm full. And Selena says, oh, full. <laughs> All right. Y'all are in the right place. So I have a full picture, no glass. There you go. Way to go, Rev. Thank you, Tammy. It kind of gives me a second to kind of gather my thoughts. So. <laughs> I see it as an opportunity to fill it up. Awesome answer, Tammy. Love it. And Nancy says she hopes she's full as well. All right. So let's go back to our, uh, our personal youth. When we were younger, some of us became an advocate of creativity back then. Some of us became an advocate of courage, transformation, organizing we are we all are some kind of advocate of some strength that we each have the question becomes where do we learn that where do we learn how to have strength and regardless if you're the half full or the half empty we've all seen strength somewhere in our time of life I know when I was five, five years old, my parents uh, got divorced. And for five years, my mom raised my brother and I on her shoe factory salary. Shoe factory back then were ones that they put the shoes together. They were the, the off brand is how I would describe it. They were not the name brand type of shoes but my mom worked in a shoe factory my brother is eight years older than me so he was stuck let's see if i was five then he was 13. so when all that happened he was old enough to kind of keep an eye on me kind of help out and watch me especially as he got older so what she made from the shoe factory was not much at all whatsoever but i watched the strength that my mom had to face everything that she did head on. And she did that because she knew that she needed to be able to provide for the three of us, my brother, myself, and my mom. She had to provide for all of us. But never thinking that one day I would be a single mom of two as well. Not making much, at least not in the i made too much money to have any help as far as like food stamps or whatever but i didn't make enough to survive 
So I'm not going to get on that soapbox tonight. That will be safe for another time. Um, but not making much and facing everything head on and do what I needed to do to provide for the three of us, which would have been Shelby, Harley, and myself. And with the strength I saw in my mom, I became an advocate for strength. I became an advocate for single mothers. So, and you see, that's, that's the way things work. We all have became the people we are thanks to positive strengths. Thanks to someone who told us at some point in our lives that we are good at something. Corey says, Mom and Daddy. Rev says, you too. The man that never loved me left when I was five. I love Rev's story. He shared his story probably... The first, I want to say within the first five episodes of Monday Motivation. So go back and listen to that. Cool Ranch was a guest on my show and Rev had came in as well. So have good strength and hair dry. There you go. Lisa D. Parents Life Journey. Yes. He told a judge we cannot eat bread and drink water. The judge put him in jail for three days for his nasty comment. There you go karma but i do love ref's rest of his story so cool ranch made me scared <laughs> so that's how you know things usually work somewhere along the way most of us were lucky enough to learn to support through positive engagement and through encouraging one another Yes, very much so. Never do we learn anything through doubt. Think about this. Never do we learn anything through doubt or mistrust. We don't even learn anything through indifference either. So, hold on just a second. Let me get ready. So, let's think about this. When we, when we say hello, let's just use when we say hello. A lot of time when we tell people over here in America, hello, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? You just see somebody and you go, oh, hello, hey, hi, hello. It's just a nice gesture as we pass by one another and as we go on with our day, our mission at hand. We are focused on that, but we will just stop for a second and say hello, right? Over in India, there was a guy that I was watching. He called it Namaste, but I believe it's Namaste is what we say over here. Uh, but it means hello. Over there, it is about a respectful greeting. You stop in your tracks and you respectfully say hello. Namaste means something means something when they when they say it. It's not just a hello. It's not just a flippant comment. It's, you know, means something. It means that I bow down for the God in you. It says that I have seen you. It also means that I see that there is something positive in you, and I bow for that deeply. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you've done yoga, TV shows, movies, you know, it's always namaste. And they look eye to eye, hands, and they bow to each other. So how much of a difference would this world be if we said what we said and we actually meant it? If we stopped and looked at the person sitting or we stopped someone in their tracks and we said hello and we really meant it it would be another world right it would be a totally different world especially whenever we also say how are you doing and we keep on walking it's like you really don't care about how i'm doing it's just because you know it's a casual gesture everybody's always done it and one trick i learned from my stepdad was you always say i'm doing super super good 
because they didn't know if you were doing super good as in badly or super good as in you're great. Just an easy comment. Right, Selena, yes. The only thing I knew is I was not loved much, so I was going to love more. When kindness wasn't shown, I was going to show kindness. More, it was a chance for me. It kept me alive mentally and physical. Yes. I think I kind of mentioned that. I don't know if you saw your email yet for me, but I think I kind of mentioned that to your email. <laughs> but the world would be a totally different place if we all took a moment to actually care. Um, those of us that are grown and mature know that life is definitely, it's not a party. It is definitely not a party. We try to treat it like a party, some of us, but it's not a party. I don't always, believe it or not, have balloons and gifts with me all the time, right? They're just not in my car all the time. Unless you're my grandkid, that might be a different story. But we are not always, all the time, happy. We think we are not, but we are entitled to sadness. We are entitled to be sad as well as happy. There's no way we can be happy all the time. It just does not happen. Unless you've got something that we don't know about, then let us know. So if I was a heart surgeon and I was able to open the door to your heart, or even mine, if y'all were able to do that with mine, do you know what I would still find in there? Do you know what you would still find in mine? There was still the sadness, um, trouble, and sorrow. You would see all that still in my heart. I would see it all in y'all's. We all have that, but it's not about that. That's right. Life sucks, but we still go on, right? As a child, I always waited for kindness from someone, and it never happened. I became the person that gives it. See, I love these. I love this, guys. Y'all, yes. Yes. How many of y'all know the song? Don't worry. Be happy. We all know the song, right? Everybody has heard that song. It annoys the living crap out of me every time I hear it. It's, it's just one of those songs I'm not crazy about. But everybody should know the whole don't worry, be happy song. Realistically, when we think of that song, how is it that it's even possible to not worry? How do you not worry? We all have worries. We all have sadness just because we're happy does not mean that we still don't worry. So why not just say, do worry, be happy? I mean, why deny the worry of its existence? It just happens. My heart is empty at times, but my family keeps me going, right? That's like this weekend. I was just, whoo, poor Robert. He definitely thought it was that time of month, and I was like, nope, that was two weeks ago or a week ago, something like that. <laughs> but I was all in my feelings, and I told him finally, I think it was just I was missing my daddy because we were up in Conway, BB area, which is, I know most of y'all not from Arkansas do not understand this, but where my daddy lived is an hour away from here. So that is kind of like in between here and there. So being that close, I was just missing my daddy. And I mean, I was crying about everything and anything Saturday morning. Robert and I kind of got into a little tiff and he walks off and there we are at Bella Ristina. And I'm like, well, screw this. I'm done shopping. I don't care anymore. I'm ready to go. I'm done. But I mean, I just started crying. Like tears were just rolling down my face. And I was just... You know. Right, Corinth? Yes.
All right. So there is something always going wrong in the world at all times. But it doesn't mean that we can't be happy. Uh, everyone is looking for happiness. Everybody, everyone is looking for happiness. And it is universal. It's not just America. It's not just Europe. It's not just India. It's not just over there. It's not just over here. Everybody is looking for happiness. Look at the opposite of bad is what? The opposite of bad is not bad. But it is still not the same as good, right? It's still not the same. It's just not bad. The same for the opposite of unhappy. Unhappy is just not unhappy. But that's also not the same as happy. You're just unhappy. You're just not unhappy, but you're not happy either. You know, whatever. Oh, uh, Leo Bormans the author who wrote the world book of happiness said that the relationship between smoking and lung cancer between smoking and lung cancer is the same as the relationship between optimism and happiness both are important to know we know that more than likely we smoke that smoking can lead to lung cancer not all the time. And even if you're a non-smoker, you can still get non, uh, lung cancer. That's not what I'm talking about. We just know that that is a leading cause to it. And we also know that if we're optimistic, we can be happy. He said that from the science, from the science, we know that 50% of optimism, 50% is about the, um, of optimism is about the genetics. It's what we got from our parents, our grandparents, and so on. We can't change it, right? It's genetic. 10% is due to circumstances. And that would be like the house we have, the job we have. So 10% is that. 40% that is left, the 40% that is left is what is between our ears. This would be the mindset that we have, the way we look at things. The 50% of genetics, like I said, we cannot change that at all. It's not going to happen. The 10% of circumstances or what we focus on all day long that 10 percent what house we have what job we're at that's all we focus on and the 40 percent is what we have in our own hands is what we can control y'all you're so sweet selena and Jimmy Mac. I think y'all is my family. Never met some of you in person. But y'all are like family to me already. Some of you are my absolute best friends. And I've never met you. <laughs> so, I love, love this group so much. Don't we all mostly think, though, that happy people experience more happy things than unhappy people? We all experience more or less of the same things in our lives. However, here is where it changes. The optimists, the happy people, give a double weight to the positive things. And the pessimists, the doomsday people, the negative people, the pessimistic people give a double weight to the negative things. We have a chance in what we want to give double weight to. You have a choice to what you want to give double weight to. 
apparently in my teenage years, I must have been, believe it or not, of all teenagers, I must have been pessimistic at some point to where it got the attention of a young man. How many of us remember a moment in our life that was so significant in our lives that we remember every detail and how something was said and that we know in that moment our lives change forever because of what someone said. This guy's name was Morty. And Morty and I were part of a church youth group. And I don't know if Morty will ever know or does know how big, how huge of an impact he made on me at 15 years of age. And he was 17 years old. Made such a huge impact. And this is what he said. He had looked at me because we were talking about who knows what back then, teenagers and stuff. And again, we're in this youth group setting. And he said, why are you so pessimistic all the time? Well, at the time, I didn't know what that word was or didn't think I knew. I don't think. Um, but I wasn't about to admit that, obviously. I don't remember what my answer was to him. But I do remember getting home and looking up the word pessimistic and discovered that it meant that I was tending to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen. And in that moment, in that single very moment, thanks to Morty, probably thanks to Zig Ziglar, thanks to my stepdad, in that moment, I realized I did not want to be that kind of person. Now, I'm sure in my teenage mind, I was thinking, how dare he call me that or think that I'm like that? But it totally, 100% at that age, shifted my thought process on how I wanted others to perceive me. I mean, who likes to hang around with negative Nelly or Debbie Downer or pessimistic Pam? <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> pessimistic Pammy. I don't. Not me. Not this girl. I do not like to hang around those people. I will listen to them, but it's not who I'm going to pick to hang out with. Don't tell anyone I'm nice. I have a reputation to protect. <laughs> my two girls disowned me when I divorced their mom, so my glass was empty totally. But I realized that there were others out there that loved me now. My glass is full, not half. It's plum full, right? Jeffrey, I have a personal question for you. Will you be my mod for my YouTube channel? Sorry for asking <laughs> your life. Don't worry. Do not worry, Jeffrey. Uh, send me a message, buddy. Send me a message and we'll talk over there about it. So again, I will listen to anybody. I love to talk to anybody. But if you're pessimistic, it is really hard for me to stay engaged with someone that's pessimistic. Optimism is a combination of belief and behavior. You start believing that things will turn out and you believe and you behave like that. Kind of like the old saying of dress for the job you want, not the job you have. It's the same thing. <clears throat> if I am optimistic, I want to be optimistic because I believe I deserve the best in the world. I believe I deserve to be happy. The more you start saying that to yourself, the more you're going to start believing it. So, all right. No Pam pessimistic. Oh. <laughs> so, did you know that people 
can be identified as red buttons, which are the pessimists, and green buttons are the optimists. And you can identify these people as a red button or a green button in less than three minutes. Three minutes, I can tell you who's a pessimist, who's a uh, red button, and I can tell you who an optimist is as a green button in three minutes. I don't think I did, Jeffrey, but I'll look into that. Right? I believe I always tried to be nice to people because I was picked on and knew I didn't like that feeling. Yes. See, that's why I was. Y'all go back to my pity party, and I'm going to talk about that here in a second. My pity party video I did last week. Yeah. I can understand that. So the red buttons are always talking about themselves, the past, and the problems. The green buttons are always talking about we, us, the future, the solution. It's not about I, it's about we. It's not about the past, it's about the future. And it's not about problems, it's about solutions. It was believed that a woman said at one point, that she thought it was nice about the red buttons and the green buttons, but that she was married to a red button. What does she do now? <laughs> if you have ever noticed that when an optimist enters the room, you become optimistic yourself. You start smiling, you feel great, you feel positive. Optimists influence each other and they like to influence each other as well. They are not there to tear another one down. Cowboy blue button. Ban that color. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, made fun of talk about in my past on YouTube. It destroyed me. They didn't try to know me for me, but I regrouped, took a deep breath, and prayed what God wanted me to do. And here you are. I love that, Selena. I don't know who would have ever done that, though. And if I find out, oh, you about maybe use my um, taken, what's his name? Ne uh, Liam Neeson? Yes. I love that line, and I have used it with my daughter. <laughs> so, here's another thing for you guys. Did you know that the best-selling sign or the best-selling doormat in the U.S. is no longer welcome? Did y'all know this? The doormats that we have, you know, outside our front door, no longer is welcome the best-selling doormat. Not even in the South, where we're supposed to be the nicest people and the most trusting and welcoming and everything, right? Do you know what the best-selling sign or doormat now is? Beware of the dog. Can you believe that? It's no longer a welcome. It's beware of the dog. But do you know why that is now? We have become afraid. If you think about it, we have become afraid of everything. There is a fear of everything in life. We are locked up in our houses. We are killing ourselves because we are not happy, because we believe that life cannot be better or get better than um, whew, lost my train of thought. Cannot get better than what we have. We have bought the dog, which is why we have the doormat now, and the alarm systems, because we're afraid. The media has not and does not help in this matter as well because everything is about fearing 
It's about focusing on conflict and measuring conflict. People are making people afraid. That's why it's no more welcome. Just beware of the dog. ADT in front of my house means do not enter my home. Brutus, my dog, will tear you up. The Chihuahua will kill you. <laughs> but in all of that, did you know that the opposite of fear, the opposite of fear is hope. And a crisis should be and is an opportunity. Think about this. Think about this. What pessimist do you know has ever solved a crisis? The pessimists never solve the crisis. Think about this. There are no statues being built or that were built for pessimists. Maybe over in German. Germany. I promise you that there are more optimists in this world. There's so many more of us. The problem is, is that the pessimist makes the most noise. They are the loudest. They are the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. That's why they get the attention. Hey, Sam, didn't do anything to be on a mat. <laughs> Being in Colorado, I have to admit, we are afraid of the aliens coming from other countries. Our country is being overrun. Yep. Smith and Wesson could stop a doe, doe bird. Could stop a dodo bird. Yes. And then like Lisa D says, sad, but true. And nobody wants to talk about it. But we had to go there. I understand that. 1,000%. But here's another thought for you guys. Did you know that the person that makes the most sales, Cool Ranch will attest to this, the person that makes most of the sales to the person that buys these items, it's normally the one when it's face to face or even through a phone. You can tell when somebody's smiling through a phone. But they are the ones that have a smile. That's why they are the best salespeople. I mean, are you really not going to buy? If someone asked you to buy a watch that was 10 after 10 versus the one that says 20 after 7, it doesn't matter, but the smile does. Have you ever noticed that? Notice that about yourself when you might be buying something? Think about the auctions. That, that's how we all came to know each other for the most part in this group. Think about the auctions some of you go to and those that come to mind. Are you more willing to buy from someone that smiles a lot, looks like they are having fun? Or are you willing to buy from someone that never smiles, is just grumpy about life? Believe me when I say happiness sells. If you still don't believe it, if you still don't believe that happiness sells, what's the best selling meal in the world? Yep, that's why I put a giant mirror in front of my inside sales phone sales reps. Yes, I had one in front of me. My dad, my stepdad made me put one in front of me while I was on the phone. I mean, it's just natural for me to smile but you know <laughs> nope that would come in handy when i had someone on the other line that was just debbie downer 
And I was just like, okay, I understand. Let me see what I can do for you. <laughs> Might have put a little hold and banged the daggum phone on the desk 20 times, but hey, they didn't hear it. <laughs> so, if you do not know what the best selling meal is, Happy Meals. Happiness sells. We can't change the reality in our lives, but we can change how we look at reality. The other day, most of you saw my pity party video that I was talking about earlier. That was on me not having another ear surgery, but instead having to get a hearing aid. And I was in my feels. The reality is my right ear has been, been through so many surgeries. Surgeries after surgery after surgery. And it has severely impacted my hearing loss. The nerve part to where I can't hear out of it for 90% of the time the nerve is that far damaged. I can't do anything to change this. The reality of that is my life now. It's a fact. It's not an opinion. Yet I can change how I look at this new reality that I've been given. I'm able to receive and I'm going to be giving a tool the hearing aid that will help me hear better out of that ear. And at least I'll be able to hear now where some might not ever have that chance or the opportunity. I'll be able to choose to hear my husband or not hear him. The reality is the same. I've lost my hearing and it's severe, but how I look at it is, and what's being given to me is what will be making the difference. <laughs> right? So there's the final answer, guys. There's the final answer. I asked you all earlier if the glass is half full or if it's half empty. Every one of you pretty much said half full. We now know. Stop looking at your life and your work like this glass or this bottle right here. Watch your life and your work, and your family, and your own strengths, like the glass or the bottle. There's the same water in it right now, even if I was just to refill it with another glass of water. If, but if you're satisfied with the life you have, and you see your strengths that you have, Many possibilities, many experiences, things you did, things where you felt, my God. Luckily, the glass is not full. It's a stupid, terrible thing to think that we will be happy for 100% one day. It's not about the aim. We have a choice to look at our lives like this bottle. Is it half full or is it half empty? We can look at it as in full of emptiness and things we will never achieve. Or to see what is the strength and still leave a few things that make us believe that we can set some goals that we can still do something. 
looking at the glass as half full or half empty is missing the point, guys. It's missing the point. Rather than thinking whether it's half full or half empty, the glass is refillable. The glass is refillable. And you have the power to fill that glass. Analysis doesn't work. Whether the glass is half full or half empty is absolutely missing the point. The glass is refillable. Feel it. Happiness doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. You can't add more time to your life. By gosh, you can add more life to the already existing time that you have. Get out there and live and enjoy and be happy. Change what you can and accept what you can't. Decide to be able to accept your reality, but look at it differently. So again, the glass is neither half full nor half empty, guys. It's refillable. It doesn't matter. It's refillable. Thank you guys for being here on that topic. It is one that I have wanted to do for quite some time now. I think it's only appropriate to that one, to that one before next Monday. The Monday Eve before Monday, if there's such a thing. Again, not sure if you guys realize or not, but tonight was my 49th episode of Monday Motivation. Next Monday will be the 50th episode. Can y'all believe that? So I'll try to put together some sort of comp compilation. And we can talk about which ones we enjoyed and which ones we were like, nah, don't ever do that again, Scooter. I look forward to celebrating that event with you guys. We got a lot of celebrating to do this week. Again, Saturday night will be the 2000 sub giveaway. So I encourage you to encourage your friends to sub if they feel they could use a Monday motivation and if they could use some shopping in their life. Let's see. That's right. Don't you love that, Selena? I love it when I get chills. When I give my own self chills, it's like, woo! Give me some more of that. Yes. I love that. Refill the glass. Hey, Echo, welcome in. Good to see you. Go refill your glass, folks. <laughs> You're so welcome. Aw, oh, good, Lisa D. Wow, Renee, that is really an inspiring message. I have deaf in one ear from a tumor. I have a cochlear implant. I would never have guessed that, Francine. You give us the ones that are going through, you know, losing our hearing and stuff. You, you make that, you give us hope instead of fear. I feel the same, at least it can help me love the message. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, tomorrow night. All right, come on, guys. 117. Let's get Selena there from 1000. Y'all remember what it was like, those of you that hit your 1,000. Heck, we all remember what it was like when we hit 200, let alone 500, right? So let's help each other out. Sub to everybody if you have not done so already. Tomorrow night, Rogue Flow will be with me. Um, we will be back with some more auction items Wednesday night. 
I will be back on my channel with Dream Chaser and our special guest. Yes, I forgot to change the picture today. No, it does not matter. But our guest is going to be Selena. If y'all have not figured it out, Selena will be on with us Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thursday night, I will be back on with Roflo and Cool Ranch Dorito on my channel. And then Saturday night is going to be the big hoorah. So make sure you ring the bell so that you are notified of all notifications for when we go live. The times and everything are all there. Yay. I know, Cool Ranch, you've hinted enough as it was last Thursday. <laughs> All right. So, guys, refill your glass. Thank you for being here. Now, let's do this thing. <laughs> 